Hey guys, welcome to PMP Success Secrets with Scott. On today's podcast, I'm going to break down quality. Why is it important? How do I understand it? And most importantly, how do I use it to get more PMP questions right? Let's do this thing. All right, here we go. Now, I'm going to break this down very, very simply, okay? When we think about quality, we got to ask ourselves, why? Why is it important to a project, all right? We don't wanna take anything for granted. We always wanna understand why. So quality's no different. Why is it important? Well, it impacts everything, all right? If we put our people to work, if we push them, if we're driving through and we don't have quality, what's gonna be impacted? Ask yourself that. Well, heck, cost is, because we're gonna have to do things a thousand times. We're gonna have to buy a bunch of things back. We're gonna have to remake them, all that stuff. It's gonna kill our schedule, so we don't want that. Also, our reputation with the customer to the bottom if we deliver with subpar quality, subpar what they want. So, no, no, right there. And lastly, your success as a project manager and your job is dependent on your ability to get your team to deliver with quality, okay? And so as we say, why? Well, it makes a damn bit of difference to say cost, schedule, all their reputation out there and our success on an individual and company-wide basis. So seems like product quality is pretty important. Now let's ask ourselves, how do we achieve quality? Is it magic thing? Snap our fingers, tell our people to work with quality, push them harder? No, quality is not free and it's not magic. All right, what is quality? It's either invested in early and often or you pay for it later, okay? So you got this bill, you just gotta figure out where you're gonna pay the bill and how much the bill's gonna be at the end of the day, all right? So quality isn't free, it isn't magic, and it's an investment. We gotta decide where we're gonna make that investment, all right? So all this wraps up into what we call the cost of quality. Now I'm gonna break that down very, very simply. Now, let's think about we're delivering a product. It doesn't matter what the product is, anything, right? Now, where is the worst place that we could discover that there is a quality issue? The worst place, where could that be? Well, that would be with the customer, right? If the customer gets whatever you make, all this newfangled thing you're proud of, and they say, hey, something's wrong. There's something wrong here. Quality's bad. That would be the worst, why? They're gonna ask for it to be repaired. They're gonna lose faith in you. They're gonna send it back and we gotta take it back, redo it and all this work that's been baked in here, we gotta unwrap it and remake it and send it out. Oh God, that's terrible, all right? And so what we call that, it's called external failure cost. Fancy words for we built it and it ain't good, all right? We got liabilities, we got warranty problems, we got lost business, lost reputation, all that stuff. And if we think about how much that's gonna cost us, that's gonna be dollar sign, dollar sign, dollar sign, dollar sign, bad. Like you go look for that steakhouse and it's got dollar signs across the thing. This is the most expensive quality mistake that we can have if the customer finds it, right? So we don't wanna invest in that type of quality as our only last resort. We wanna to try to get away from it. So what could we do? Well, we would walk back. What would be the step in front of the customer? Well, it would be, if we found it, right? It's still in our shops, it's still on our job site, it's still there, what if we found it? Is that better than the customer finding it? Yeah, obviously we didn't ship it, we didn't lose faith. You know, we might be like, oh God, thank God we didn't send this thing, right? Well, it's still expensive, expensive, but it's internal failure cost. So what do we gotta do there? Obviously we gotta do rework before it gets out. We gotta do scrap, potentially we have to scrap some of the materials, bring it back, rebuild it, it's gonna kill our time, kill our cost. It's not as bad as when it got to the customer, but it ain't great, let's admit that. So we're gonna give that two bad uh, money signs. Instead of three for the customer, which is expensive, 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 it's only double expensive, still not great. Now, both of these things, the external and the internal failure costs, what are those called? They're called the cost of non-conformance, meaning we made it and it doesn't conform to what we want. And I want you to see non-conformance as our cost of quality as bad. Now, sometimes it's unavoidable, sometimes it happens, but it's bad, all right? And so that is the money that we have spent to fix things that don't make the spec, okay? So that's one side of it. 
Now, we don't want to have all our money there. Oh, that's how we're going to handle quality. We're just going to find it on our, our shipping docks and fix it then and rework it, etc. Or we'll just wait till the customer gives it back. Terrible way to run your business and your project. Okay. What we want is we want the other side. Well, let's work ourselves back before we find it on the shipping dock internally. What could we do? Well, we could invest in individuals that are out there testing quality. See that little person down there? Testing quality, taking samples, you know, doing checklists, doing audits and inspections, all those things. We call that appraisal cost. That's the appraisal cost of quality, all right? That's testing, non-destructive testing, those kind of stuff, destructive testing, inspections. Those are things that we are investing in, right? Because the people, the tests, the time, those things cost money and resources, but we are making a decision to say, we want to invest in this now so that we can limit the amount of what? We can limit the amount of the back end, external and, and internal failure costs that we find. We're gonna keep problems from happening. We'll catch them earlier and we'll catch processes that aren't optimal, okay? So that's awesome. Now, is that the, where we're gonna stop? No, because you know this is during the process that we're finding things, we're assessing them, super important, okay? But the last thing that we wanna do is we wanna spend our money there at the beginning, right? We wanna build quality as much as we can into the process into the project the way we do work the way people are trained and how does that manifest itself it's in prevention costs now what, what what does that take the form of it takes the form of training it takes the form of having the right documented processes and ways to do things or the equipment or heck giving them enough time to do their jobs they're, so they're not rushing now those are all preventative costs because if you think about that, you're investing time with the right equipment, the right people, the right processes, the right materials, the right time to do the work. You're investing in that so that they won't find it while we're while they're working. There won't be anything to find or lessing down. And also, so that we won't find as much on the shipping dock. Where it's like, oh, we messed it up again. Should have painted it blue, painted it red. Who? How do we miss that? or the customer won't find it. So as we lay this out here, we got different dollar signs. Toward this one side, the cost of conformance, that's uh, the prevention cost and the appraisal cost. That's are things to keep the things to conform to the standard. That's what we want, not the non-conformance. The conformance costs, while they are investments, in the big picture, picture heck of a lot cheaper, right? Heck of a lot cheaper to do those kind of things. So as we're laying out where we're going to spend our money, or let me say it a different way, where the money's going to be spent. Because you might decide, I'm not going to spend anything in cost of conformance. Therefore, I'm going to save money. Oh boy, you got something coming to you, buddy. Like later in the cost of non-conformance, shoot, prices might go through the roof. So you didn't pay it now, you're going to pay it later and it might be way higher. So we've got to think strategically cost benefit how much are we going to spend up front so that we can minimize the cost at the end now it's a balance right it's a gamble it's an investment we can't you know empty the coffers to say all this preventative costs we still got to run the business we still got to run the project so it's a balance but we've got to make a more educated decision in understanding where we're spending our money where we're investing cost of conformance i want you to see that in your mind preventative and appraisal or the cost of non-conformance. We're going to have money set aside to handle it to because we know we're going to have internal failure costs. We know we're going to have external failure costs. Think about the money that companies lay across for warranties and stuff. They've done the numbers, all right? They're doing their best to build the quality in, but they know in the back end. So as we look at this entire cost of quality beginning to end, now it should be simple to go, oh, this makes sense. This is where the money is spent to ensure quality is maintained for the customer. So go back, dive through those, really think about the projects and the products that you're working on now and saying, hmm, what kind of investments are we making? If we can do that, then we can look at the questions the right way. We can be prepared to succeed. And at the end of the day, we're going to get them right. So go off, do that, and I'll see you in the next one. Adios. Uh -huh.